Public service announcement. Passionate. Passionate. So passionate. Passionate. Let me tell you something. So what is this Passion PSA podcast? Who am I? Well, they call me Passion. Short for Passion, no last necessary. Why is there no last name necessary? Because the first name says it all. I am Passion and all that that embodies. What do I do here? I give you the life coaching that you know you need, but don't enroll yourself in. When did I start? Actually, 2017. I'd leave a PSA on my Instagram regarding something I'd observed, and now we've evolved to this. Why do I do it? Why not? If even one person is able to take away one thing that changes their life, someone else's life, or changes the world for the better, then I've done what I was charged to do. So come on in, sit and listen for a while. There's something here for everyone at the Passion PSA Podcast. Greetings and salutations, my beloved passionate newcomers, visitors, and guests. Welcome to another episode of the Passion PSA Podcast, where I, passion, no last necessary, your get you right guru, issue a weekly public service announcement about whatever I've observed or was on my mind. This is a for your consideration zone where the objective is to offer you a perspective you may not or may have previously considered to A, expand your thinking, and B, aid you in becoming a better version of yourself for yourself and for others. This is a safe space. This is why I be telling y'all things that most people won't tell you. Like my eyelash glue is crazy. I hope y'all ain't see my eyelash glue because it was doing a lot. But it's not necessarily a delicate one, okay? I'm I'm not going to rob you of your right to feel how you feel. You can disagree, but I'm not going to sugarcoat the truth to make it more palatable. The goal is to get you to higher, more expanded thinking so you can operate as your highest and best self. If you're new here, affirmations are our first order of business so we can intentionally raise the vibration and start on one accord. Let's get on the same frequency. If you're ready, go ahead and take a deep breath. You are always welcome to repeat after me or to use this time to state your own affirmations. I am safe to reveal my damage. I am safe to speak my truth. My truth heals as it reveals. I am growing. I am correcting. I am better and better every day. I am well. It is well. All is well. Well is all. I say, I say, I say. So confession time, passionate. If you've been down since the get down, you know that in season one, I spoke about my plants all the time. Sometimes that's what I'm looking at when I'm looking off into the distance. If you go back to old episodes, you can see the trees right over my shoulders. They were flourishing and healthy and beautiful. Now, last week, I shared with y'all again that my studio used to be in the smaller space. And I bring it up today because I feel like when my studio was in that space, I was in there more frequently. So I feel like I gave my plants way more attention. And since I've come into this space, some of my plants have experienced like different levels of neglect at different points in time. Now, I'm just being transparent about it because y'all know my mind draws like all kinds of wild parallels. So... This this case is no exception. Looking at my green babies, I got convicted and then I had an epiphany. All at once. So there are things going on with my trees right now. And I'm going to show you. Some of the leaves, they look absolutely crazy. The tallest tree, Lumiere, two of the fronds are like completely dead. But the tree is not, thankfully. And that's one of the beautiful things about these trees. Like they'll start sprouting new fronds even though the original fronds aren't flourishing. So that's like proof of life that although the tree is not in optimal health, it's not dying. (laughs) That's most of us, right? We're not in optimal health, but we're not dying. I said something. One thing about plants, and if you're a plant parent, you may have experienced this as well. Plants pick up on and respond to your energy. So I see it as a testament to my energy that even if I haven't done so great by my plants, I'm never proud of that, so don't think I'm saying this with pride, but if I haven't done well by them, I've been fortunate enough that my energy is clean or pure or true, I don't know what the word is, but it's enough of that, that when I get back to handling them correctly, even though I have to attend to the damage, they start to flourish again like nothing happened, and I'm super grateful for that because it really has been a journey, right? I learned so much by buying these plants. Most of the plants that I have in here I didn't know anything about caring for them before I bought them. I didn't know anything about anything when it came to plants, right? So previously, I only had smaller tabletop plants and I did what I could with them. I didn't think I had any type of green thumb, but I also didn't do research on how to care for them. 
I didn't even think to do research on how to care for them. I didn't know any botanists or people who were like really into plants the same way who could give me real time instructions or advice. Now, don't ask me why I didn't think to go to a florist and ask. Like, I literally didn't think of that until I was editing this script. Melty face emoji. But for example, right, with money trees, they're really finicky. They're not transient plants, meaning they don't like to be moved. Once you find a home for them, that's where they want to stay. And if you start moving them around or you repot them more than once, if they don't absolutely require it, they start acting crazy and they'll start dying almost immediately. The money tree that I had before, the tabletop one, I didn't know about the negative effects of environmental changes and sunlight requirements. Ultimately, she died. And maybe she didn't, maybe she could have been saved, but at this point, I'll never know. So peace and rest to the homie, okay? Now, when I got a bigger money tree, I had done some research and she did really well for a while, but I had to move her and then I changed her diet, right? So she ultimately died and I learned a lot from that, but we'll save that for another episode. Now, I have lots of snake plants, right? With snake plants, why am I rolling? Child, snake plants can be moved from room to room around the room they're cool in direct sunlight they cool in the shadows they cool in a windowless room in fact they're so good with change one of my snake plants that was living on the windowsill for a good while i relocated that one closer to my bed and since then three babies have been born while i moved a different one from indirect sunlight back closer to the window and there was immediate growth Okay, we're not going to do a whole botany episode. I'm just a little excited. The point is, while I have learned so much on this plant journey and given great care and attention, there has also been neglect, maintenance, and care that haven't been given. And my tree leaves are telling the story. So remember I said I had an epiphany. Okay. The leaves are revealing that the trees are not getting what they need. And instead of me staying on top of it for whatever reasons, right, preoccupation with this gala, with everything else, no downtime or plain old laziness, because I'm usually trying to juggle too much, things are being neglected. The things that are being neglected are telling the story. I can't deny it. I'm embarrassed by it. So what do I do? Well, this is still my studio and I still record in this studio space. So I have options. One of the options is to shoot from a different angle, change the actual positioning of the camera. Another option is to position myself differently. So when I sit here in this mustard seed, I turn the plant. So y'all can't really see the damage. I'm turning the plant to hide the truth of the neglect. And so I don't have to answer the question, that's what happened in your tree. Because the leaves were doing so much better. And if y'all can't see the damage, if I don't fix the damage, I then don't have to deal with the follow-up question. Pastor, I thought you were going to do something about that. What happened? Why, like, why you fell off? This is the second installment in the housekeeping series because my and a lot of other people's poor plant management is very telling, not only about how we care about our plants and sometimes how we care about our homes, but how we're living our lives. It is so much easier to hide the damage when you know somebody's looking than fix it. It's so much easier to turn the damage to the unlit side or tell the story from a place where nobody can see where the damage is or where the damage was than it is to actually do something about the damage present. The problem is that, yes, it is way easier to hide the damage. It doesn't what? Good job, passionates. It doesn't correct the damage so then the damage does one of two things it either gets to a point where you can't hide it or it gets to a point where you can't fix it i could continue to try to hide the damage to lumiere and the rest of the tree family but in truth i want lumiere to be better i want lumiere to be okay i don't want things to just look like they're okay right let me lay down actual baby hairs instead of combing the breakage forward and making it an art installation on my forehead in an effort to hide the fact that the hair at the very front of my head needs to be treated let me actually work on growing back my edges instead of wearing bangs i don't want to put on a shapewear to hide or smooth out the fupa and the belly overhang i want to do the work to make the body actually be what it looks like once i put on all of these contraptions if I want to put on something decorative, let me put on something decorative, not because I'm trying to hide something, but because I'm trying to accessorize or enhance something, right? The lipstick, the lashes. If I shoot from this angle, 
even the slightest turn of the camera is going to reveal that the trees don't look so good and probably aren't doing so good. Now there's a new issue. Do we cut off the damaged leaves or do we leave the damaged leaves in place because we're trying to hold on to what once was? This is why I was using a hair example. A lot of people experience that with their hair. You got issues with hair growth, right? And instead of cutting off the damage, you are holding on to it because the damage is where you can see some length. The ends are thin and look like trash, but you still got length, right? And you're so afraid that if you cut off the little bit of length that you have, you either won't have any length or that it will take an eternity for new length to come in. And you just can't wait that long. Be advised. I'm not condemning or judging anyone, especially in the hair space. I can't say we in this instance, because if you've ever paid attention to the show intro, you know, I've been almost as bald as Mr. Clean. So this example simply doesn't apply to me. Point is, somebody in this audience would rather hold on to the damage, hoping that if they could just take off a little bit at a time, they'll be able to get what they want from the situation. They'll still be able to make it look like everything is all good until everything is actually all good. And more times than not. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. So I had to pick and choose, Passionates. Was I going to sit here and continue to pretend? And sidebar. That's not the only reason I don't shoot in front of the trees, okay? Those of you who watched the documentary, you know how much work went into furnishing this studio. So I'm going to sit in front of or on whatever seat I want to because all these seats are paid for, okay? Amen, saints. Sometimes I want to shoot in front of my sound panels because I invested a lot of time, money, and energy into those panels. Sometimes I want to shoot on the couch. Sometimes it's easier to shoot in front of my desk. Sometimes I want to sit in one of those one seaters in front of the trees. And at some point I'll get back in front of the keyboard. Y'all notice I moved it. I'll get back in front of the keyboard because I definitely have an episode coming up that will require the keyboard as a prop. Stay tuned. Before what I didn't want was to let you see the damage that was done. Now, what I don't want to do beyond not wanting an ugly aesthetic is to hide shame. I created this ugliness by not staying on top of what I needed to stay on top of. And I'm aware of that. We don't need a reminder every episode that I haven't been the best plant mommy. At this point, what I definitely do need is to make sure that I am working to repair the damage. Okay, here's where we do the shadow work. Are you repairing the damage right now? Are you pruning the leaves? Are you taking off the leaves that have brown spots? Are you afraid to take off some of those leaves? Because if you take all of the leaves off that have brown spots, there'll be all these holes and big gaps. Are you willing to cut off the damaged leaves altogether, knowing that if you get rid of the damage, you make room for the healthy leaves. And even if they don't come in in those same spaces, they'll still come in in other places. And so for what was damaged, while you can't necessarily reverse that, you can start fresh with something new. Are you trimming the ends and sporting the bob? Or are you holding on to those sad strands that look like wisps of wheat? Where are you in your growth journey? Where are you in your journey to being your authentic self? A lot of people are claiming to be real and saying they don't have anything to hide. And then they tell you these things about themselves. And those things are true adjacent on their better days and are not true at all on most days. Are you those people? Are you claiming to keep it real all the time? Are you claiming to be transparent but turning your trees around so nobody can see your leaves? Are you shooting from a different angle so nobody can see everything that's going on? Are you pulling your belly in in the photo? Itty bitties, you, you scrunching your arms together to make cleavage or you wearing a push-up joint? Because <laughs> I'm doing both, <laughs> okay? Judge me not, oh gentle passionate. Where are you in your journey? If there was something that you were doing really, 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 really good at, like you were really excelling at this thing, and at some point you stopped excelling for whatever reason, are you at a place where you're okay with people seeing that? Or would you much rather pretend by making sure no light is shown on it, making sure that after it goes through post-production, you can't really see that part of the picture? It's not hidden per se, but it's not exposed. Where are you in your journey? Because where you are in your journey is going to tell you how much growing you have left to do on this leg of the journey. Now, in my original script, y'all see I'm rolling again. I wrote that it'll tell you how much growing you have left to do, but this growth 
put a star right here. This growth is for what you got to do now. The next leg of the journey will stretch you again or stretch you more and different growth will be required. Point is, if you're still trying to hide the damage, but you're not trying to correct it, the damage is only continuing to get worse and can very quickly go from damage to destruction. If you're trying to correct it in secret, that's a real thing. Maybe you don't want everybody to know that you're trying to correct it. Maybe you'll be okay with sharing that you had some things that you had to fix after they're fixed. And that's fine because you have a right to your privacy. You have a right to go through some things on your own and work through your stuff by yourself. But it's one thing to work on your stuff in private. And it's something different to try to pretend like you don't have anything to work on. Are you pretending you don't have anything to work on? Or are you in the place where you recognize that you definitely have something to work on? You're working on it. And whoever knows, knows their opinion doesn't determine your progress. Key takeaways, passion is I want you to think about what, if anything, you're hiding. That's first. Next, why don't you want it on display? Are you keeping it discreet because you don't want people in your business? Or are you trying to make sure you don't have to see it as well as nobody else seeing it? Are you shielding yourself from the criticism and judgment of others? Are you evading it because you're not ready to deal with it or because you don't know how to deal with it? That's a real thing. There are a lot of things that we don't deal with simply because we don't know how. We don't know who to ask, either because we're embarrassed or because the people that we have already asked also don't know how to deal with it. And we're too discouraged or disgusted to ask again. Right. So figure out why it is that you don't want anybody to see what it is you're working through. And if it's because you think you're the only one, if you think you're the only one going through it, remember, beloved, you are one in an estimated eight billion. Somebody is going through the exact same thing. Third, I want you to think about who you're hiding it from. How is this different from number two? Because now we're getting down to the exact who. Are you hiding it from somebody else who might be partially, mainly or solely responsible? Maybe the damage isn't all from what you've done or haven't done. Maybe the damage is largely because of something somebody else did. Now, with my plants, admittedly, that's all me, right? But you could have gotten a plant from somebody who really didn't know how to care for plants. So you were starting at a deficit. With your hair, you might be doing everything you know how to do, but you were never taught how to care for your hair properly because you never actually had somebody who was caring for your hair properly. You had somebody doing your hair and it may have looked nice, but they might not have been doing an effective job caring for it. And so your whole life, you've been practically bald headed, but you've been bald headed because you never really had a fighting chance. Your mother didn't know how to do your hair good. And she was furious at the fact that it was so difficult to manage and such a challenge because the way your hair grows out your head made her have to work harder. She had to take time that maybe she didn't have or maybe she just felt like she didn't have. She had to put in more effort, more energy, more love. But that's not something that she was taught to begin with. So she didn't teach you that part. You started out at a deficit. Here you are now still bald headed and doing everything to try to hide it. And then when you do have a little piece of strand hanging down, inches, you try to hold on to it for dear life. Now, that's two separate examples where you started at a deficit because of someone else's inefficacy. Are you trying to hide it because you don't want that person to see? Because you don't want that person to be embarrassed that they're the reason you're down bad now. And then after you've asked yourself all of those questions, I want you to ask yourself, where am I in the repair? Are you in the place of actually being ready to let people see how much damage there is? Because no slash. Half the people you're trying to preclude from seeing it, been seeing it from a long time, okay? They've been waiting for you to come to terms with it because they've been over it. Are you ready to expose where the damage is? Now, that's two different questions. If you need a visual, think of the show Hoarders, right? Opening the door of the house and letting you inside is showing you where the damage is. Moving three mountains of newspapers to reveal the fossilized cats you didn't even know were missing, much less dead and fossilized. No, that's not an exaggeration. OK, one of the episodes, the lady had like three fossilized cats buried in her mounds of garbage and she didn't know. She just figured they were in the house somewhere. Point is, 
that's showing how much damage there is. If you're ready to reveal your damage and where, how much, and all the other quantifying, qualifying questions, see if you can get some help for it. Please don't continue to try to hide the damage in the hopes that it'll either eventually correct itself, that you just never have to deal with it, that everybody will realize that it's not up for discussion and they'll just leave it alone like you do. Because the thing about hoping that people will remain silent is that there's always one who going to call it out, whether you're ready or not. So while you're hoping to outrun the me's of the world who make you aware of the things that you may or may not already be aware of, and if you are aware, you just didn't really want to talk about it, it's almost impossible to dodge us, and it's absolutely a waste of time. So you waiting on them to tell your story, or are you ready to tell it? And the final question to ask yourself, would you like for your tree to get to a place where you have to throw it away because it can't be saved, or do you want to save it? If somebody's offering solutions and they're speaking from experience, you going to take heed or you trying to stay damaged? Because a lot of folks are. OK, we won't admit it, but it's true. We'd much rather do it our way, even though our way has proven ineffective and doesn't make any sense to repeat. Are you open to trying something new? And if not, if you don't want to do anything different because that's uncharted territory, are you prepared for the people who are doing the work, growing, and making changes? Are you prepared for them to start moving away from you? Because that's what happens when the people around you are actively doing the work to grow past their damage, especially when they start seeing the fruits of their labor, and you are actively doing the work to stay broken. Eventually, they outgrow you. So where you had the damage, or in some cases, you may have been the damage, you're now the pot that's not big enough for their roots. So they need a bigger pot so they can keep growing. Figure out where you are in that conversation, because if you don't figure it out on your own, the people around you will figure it out for you. And they either go and blast you and tell you that you're the problem or very tenderly tell you, I love you with my whole heart, but... I'm not fooling with you. you. You still in a relationship with your brokenness. And me and brokenness have broken up. I'm now courting correction. So fooling with you puts me at risk of stagnating or even undoing my progress. And I worked too hard to get here just to go backward. Are you ready for that? Because if no, it's time to do some work. And no matter how uncomfortable it is, you got to start now. When I started trying to correct the damage to the trees, I started by trimming some of the leaves, like the ones that were all the way brown, all the way down to like the end. And some of them, they were so dried out, I didn't have to cut anything. As soon as I touched it, it came off. So I'm just had brown pieces. So like I clipped the ends, right? I, I, I trimmed down the sides. I pruned those. And in the meantime, there are still some that I'm trying to figure out. Do I hold on or do I let it go? And in trying to figure out if I should let it go, I just left it. So I started the work, but I'm not done yet. And I'm aware that there's a lot of repair that still needs to be done. But I've started the process. Now, do they look 100% better? They look better. There are still some leaves that I might have to cut my losses on. And some that if I do trim them, they go from looking like a leaf to looking like a belt strap. I want to be able to shoot from that angle again, though. I want to be able to shoot in that corner again, and I want to be able to shoot without shame. So instead of me being ashamed and continuing to hide the damage, I want to let you, I want to let you know what was going on. People that you think are doing really well, you think they have it all together? It's an illusion. They're showing you their lives from their best angle. They're showing you the shot from the best angle. Some people, they're not ashamed at all, okay? When they shooting and posting their unfiltered posts on social media, you see the piles of laundry behind them. And while you may or may not be appalled and wondering, like, why they couldn't at least turn off the light? The answer is simple. They have nothing to hide. The truth is, they have laundry that needs attention. And stopping to create something either they needed to express or share or something that somebody else may have needed was the priority in that moment. Not anyone else's opinions or judgment. Somebody else, on the other hand, will not come on social media unless they are photo finished and have the perfect angle, have the perfect chroma key green screen backdrop. We're all going through something. And when more of us are willing to be honest about the fact that we either need help or are falling short in certain areas, 
we open the door and create the safe space for others to also be honest. When everybody's being honest about what they have going on and what they're dealing with, we come to a place where more of us can correct the issues, okay? You get your right guru is signing off. Buy your tickets, email your gala questions to let me ask Brie at gmail.com if you would like to make a donation, but you need to use another platform other than the donation link, like you need to use cash or you prefer Zelle, that's fine too. Those links are in the description box and will be pinned below the episode. And that's it, okay? I'm out of here. Go forth. Be great. Be filled with bliss. Be armed and empowered with knowledge. You can hide the damage, but you can't hide it forever because eventually it is going to reveal itself, which in turn and ultimately reveals you. And all things be passionate. See you later. Mm -hmm.